Women and their worlds are rarely found in the history books, but there is no better way to learn about history, particularly our history, than by listening to the women, because they tell us what people were really thinking in their homes, sitting beside the fire. The Founding Fathers were very self-conscious. They understood that they were doing something extraordinary, and that if they succeeded, that their letters and papers would be published. And therefore, they wrote with that in mind to each other and to other men. Uh, when they wrote to women, they expected those letters to be destroyed, and they're much more real, uh, much more filled with their hopes, fears, loves, uh, predicaments. But uh, their women's letters are also much more of the reality of the time. In the same letter, a woman will talk about the political situation and rail against the French or the British or whomever, and, uh, and then talk about uh, the, the price of eggs uh, or the problems with getting good uh, fabric, um, so you have, or somebody having a baby. So you have a lot more of a, a fuller picture of the era when you look at it through the eyes of women. The new trend in history is women's history and gender history. And that's because the real study of history is power. I always think Freud got it wrong. It's not sex that drives people, it's power. And of course, history has always studied power, but it's studied power in its, well, its crudest sense. Battles and wars and kings and presidents and generals. And what the study of race and gender class and the study of women's lives has brought us is new understandings of power. Dolly Madison was excluded from the realm of official power and yet still managed to exercise it. She used the social world that she had, this style of politicking, which we can call feminine, to bring everybody in the room together and they learned to work together in bipartisan ways ways that it turns out, though no one could have known it, were absolutely necessary for building a democracy and a nation state. Her legacy to us is a model for politics. And this is a model based on cooperation, building bridges instead of bunkers, and it is the way of the future.